Hello and welcome back. Today I'm in my childhood bedroom, um, home for a bit of more of the summer, so that's why we have the change of scenery here. But thank you all for pushing me past a thousand subscribers. Keep subscribing, commenting, liking, etc. But thanks for tuning in today because I wanted to talk about perhaps America's most legendary fashion icon and designer, Ralph Lauren. This will be just like a short mini documentary covering Ralph's story and his most iconic and important influences over his more than 50 year career. Whether you know almost everything about the man or just getting into fashion history, I hope you can all learn something. So without further ado, let's get right into it. Born Ralph Lifshitz in the Bronx, New York on October 14, 1939, Ralph was always a fashionable kid. After attending Manhattan Talmudical Academy and dropping out of CUNY Baruch after two years studying business, Lifshitz briefly joined the United States Army for another two years and then worked at Brooks Brothers for a while as a sales assistant. In 1967, he created the company we all know and love today, the Ralph Lauren Corporation. Just before starting his own company, he was working for a tie manufacturer, Bo Brumel, and he convinced the company to let him start his own tie line, aptly named Polo, to conjure images of American sports and high-class living. At the time, he was working out of the Empire State Building and was hand-delivering the ties to stores himself. Within a year, he had reportedly sold over $500,000 of his ties and was on the road to success. Ralph was always hustling to push himself to the front of the line, and the following year after consistent conversations with the department store Bloomingdale's, his brand became the first to have its own in-store boutique. In 1971, Ralph created his first women's line, making tailored shirts with a full collection the following year. In 1972, Polo introduced the, well, the Polo shirt. This shirt, now ubiquitous and forever tied to the basic concept of American fashion, was made of a cotton mesh with a quarter button up and short collar with a signature polo player embroidered at the chest. That same year, he opened his first standalone store in Beverly Hills, California. In 1978, Ralph made history by simultaneously introducing a men's and women's fragrance with Polo and Lauren fragrances, respectively. Three years later, in 1981, Ralph Lauren went international and expanded into the European market with their store on the new Bond Street in London. Another important part of the Ralph Lauren aesthetic was born with the purchase of the Rhinelander Mansion on Madison and 72nd in New York City in 1983 as the company renovated the French Renaissance Revival Mansion to its former glory and opulence. This store has stood as the Ralph Lauren flagship since 1986 after $15 million and 18 months worth of renovations with help from Naomi Leff with the men's department there and the women's and kids department and cafe across Madison in another beautiful building. This came just after the introduction of Ralph Lauren Home, which debuted in 1983 and included furniture and other household items and decorations. The company continued adding new lines over the following years, including Polo Sport in 1992, Double RL in 1993, Purple Label in 1994, and Lauren Ralph Lauren in 1996, and many others. In my city of Chicago, the company opened their largest store in the RL restaurant in 1999. Although a very difficult conversation, it was decided that the company should go public in 1998 on the New York Stock Exchange. The brand name and the man Ralph himself carried the stock, and by close at the end of the day, the offering had raised $767 million, from an original asking price of $26 to a closing price of $31.50. Currently, in 2021, the market cap for the company is over $8 billion. Years later, in 2015, Ralph Lauren stepped down as CEO and was replaced by Stefan Larson, but remained the executive chairman and chief creative officer. The brand has undergone some recent change in management, but Ralph still maintains these roles and is important to every facet of the company. It's impossible to overstate the influence of Ralph Lauren on American fashion over the past half century. In my opinion, he far overshadows the other massive names like Calvin Klein, Tommy Hilfiger, and Michael Kors in his importance and shaping of modern American sartorial. To put it simply, every designer sells clothes, Ralph Lauren sells dreams. Other designers create lines, Lauren, however, creates lives. Through advertising, clothes that live up to their reputation and living the American dream himself, Ralph Lauren has inspired generations to chase their dreams and live it through his clothes. 
there are a couple of pivotal cultural and fashion moments that I'd like to touch on in the brand's history, so let's get right into that. The term prep comes from preparatory schools, those that you might see a kid with a trust fund attend before they're sent off to the same ivy that their father went to. But the word really means more than just that. The prep style is about living a life in pursuit of pleasure. It's about owning nice things and enjoying them by whatever means necessary. Sure, it's about cashmere cable knits, tweed blazers, and penny loafers, but it's also about rebelling. And it's about that term I keep returning to, the American dream. Ralph Lifshitz took his first step and changed his name to Ralph Lauren in the 50s as a teenager to appeal to the Brooks Brother Ivy League crowd, and ever since the brand started, he marketed the most sophisticated and interesting version of success that he could. It was about lifelong pieces that were both modern and aged like fine wine. Ralph didn't just create the modern preppy aesthetic, but also redefined American luxury in general. In 1974, Ralph was asked to dress the male cast of The Great Gatsby. Maybe the vision was already there, but when a young Daisy Buchanan cried at the sheer beauty of Gatsby's shirts in the film, Ralph cemented his place in the world of luxury. The Ralph Lauren advertising matches perhaps only that of Tom Ford at Gucci in its ability to captivate and empower an audience to want something. Maybe it's just me, but when looking at a Ralph Lauren ad, you are transported into a different world. A perfect world. A world where you own the white vintage sports car, where you vacation in the Hamptons, where you sail like a Kennedy and where you live a life full of happiness and comfort. Each picture is its own universe where you live out whichever fantasy you want as long as you can wear Ralph Lauren. In 1989, he introduced the American flag sweater. Now almost as famous as the polo shirt, it was a work of genius. What could be more American than the flag itself knitted right into a luxurious sweater for everything from a breezy summer nighttime to cozying by the winter fireplace? On top of that, the modern Ralph Lauren purple label adds even more with Italian-made elegance with a hint of that iconic American twist. With no detail too small and the finest garment construction, Ralph Lauren added just another layer to his seemingly never-ending creation of the American fashion landscape. There's a fantastic documentary by Complex about this maybe odd relationship, but one of Ralph Lauren's most famous pop culture connections lies in the hip hop industry. After Polo perfected the art of marketing their vision to the affluent, their brand took a surprising turn. Fashion has always been important within the hip hop world as artists up and down the line use it to create an image for themselves. In the 1980s, a hip hop group in Brooklyn known as the Low Lifes ironically started stealing and wearing the brand in some of the worst neighborhoods of the city. Their goal was to take ownership of a lifestyle and a brand that wasn't ever meant to represent them and use it to promote the culture that they loved. They created their uniform wearing head to toe polo and widened the customer base for the brand into almost all reaches of American life. For the lowlifes, this was about wearing the best clothes and empowering themselves. The risks and exclusivity involved in acquiring the clothes also added to the allure. Perhaps they didn't care about Ralph himself or the company, but the lowlifes did care about creating their own culture and a community, and they've continued to support people in their neighborhoods to this day, allowing others to live whichever version of the American dream they want. Ralph Lauren lives many lives, but one of the ones most associated with his likeness is that of his Colorado Double RL Ranch. The modern day cowboy and workman, Ralph wanted to create a brand in his portfolio that captured the essence of the old American West and workwear that would last forever. This line moved the brand past formal and sportswear into another realm of rugged Americana. The line ranges from thick flannels to the perfect cone mill selvage denim jeans to thick shearling jackets. The items are meant to be tossed around and worn with purpose, but also maintain a level of vintage luxury. Many of the items come worn in and distressed to help the customer out on that journey. They reproduce iconic pieces from America's history by carefully selecting fabrics, construction techniques, and silhouettes. All of this talk about the Americana aesthetic leads me to my final point about the designer's relationship with Native Americans. It would be hard to miss the influence that Native American and particularly Navajo patterns and designs have had on the designer throughout his career. As we all know, there is a tough line between celebrating another culture and stealing from it, and unfortunately the Ralph Lauren brand often falls on the wrong side of that balance. 
romanticizing a culture might be okay to an extent, but profiting off of it with no intention of rewarding the creators, especially with a terrible history of Native American subjugation and erasure in the United States, is simply wrong. For example, a shirt with the slogan, On the Road to the Sacred Hills, was made and sold with no effort of the company to actually help the Sioux to reclaim their land in the Black Hills. I am not an expert on the subject, nor in any position to understand the effects that this can have on Native Americans, but I just hope for a change in the way the company portrays Native-inspired clothing and craftsmanship. Ralph Lauren is America's designer. Over his 50-year career, he has defined and then redefined American fashion. He lets people from all walks of life and anywhere in the world live out their dreams in his clothes. I hope you all enjoyed this video and please let me know any other designers that you'd like to hear about from me. And besides that, thank you for supporting the channel and I'll try to keep up with all the different content that I want to create, although it might be tough with the school starting soon. So stay tuned, like, subscribe, everything else, you know the deal. I appreciate you all, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you later. Bye.